Hello again everyone, Sokka here, and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo Career Mode. I hope you're doing well. Today we are taking on a brand new zoo, the Myers Lake Island Zoo, set in Greece. Uh, if you didn't catch the end of my last episode where we uh, gold starred the Great Caldera Safari Park, essentially, uh, this zoo is garbage and Bernie is no more, but uh, we'll let Nancy take it from here. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, here in Greece, it kind of looks like a hilly Africa from here. Hey there, you'd better sit down for this. I've got some news. I know what that news a week is. Ago, Bernie went missing in the Arctic. <laughs> I know. I only just found out. Apparently, our illustrious board of governors decided it was best not to tell anyone while the search parties were still out looking for him. Yeah, privacy but issues and all that ago, such. They called off the search, and they hadn't found him. So. They had him declared legally dead, just so they could sell off all of Bernie's zoos. Poor Bernie! Everything, from the aardvarks to the zebras. A to Z. They didn't even wait for Bernie's daughter, Emma, to get back from overseas before they cashed in. Which, that was a scumbag they move. They offloaded the whole company to a slimy hedge fund manager called Dominic Myers. Mark my words, he only wants the zoos to help buff out his tarnished image. Anyway, I guess he's your new boss now. Not mine, though. He fired me. So, awesome scumbag. I know you'll do your best. I know you'll protect the animals. I'll do my best. And then old scumbag McGee is going to come in and uh, mess up Bernie's name and basically oh, tell us what are. we have to do now, here. First, let me say how sorry I am that we're meeting in such awful circumstances. I was a great admirer of Benjamin. Wait, no, Bernard, Bernard. You may not know this, but we yeah, were look actually at that very face. good friends. That's why it's going to be such an honor to continue his life's work of letting people pay me to see animals. I can see you're still sad, though. Perhaps this will lift your spirits. I'm making you senior zoo manager. Hooray! It's a position of great responsibility, although these same wages... I've also bought a new zoo, which you're going to be in charge of. It's a bit of a fixer-upper, but it's nothing yeah, you, you can't say that handle. again. All you have to do is make the animals happy, get those annoying protesters to leave, expand the zoo as gosh, adopt a grizzly bear and a Siberian tiger, make sure the zoo is extremely profitable, and then just pass a teeny tiny little inspection. Oh, is that Trust all? Trust me, you'll have more spare time than you know what to do with. Oh, and uh, also you have to research some bears or something? Oh, I forget the details. All right, so off we go. And first and foremost, let's pause it because this thing is a death trap waiting to happen. It's a used car that you buy and all of a sudden it starts making weird noises. We've got some massive problems in the zoo first and foremost. So disease elephant, our vets can handle that. We have a yellow anaconda not in its ideal temperature. Same for the titan beetles. Luckily, uh, most of those can be handled quick, fast, and in a hurry. And we have the zebra habitat, not uh, big enough. So let's go ahead and take care of these one at a time. Our ultimate goal is to have 1,150 guests in the zoo for three months and have no protesters with a profit margin of $15,000 per year. That might be a little easy. But then we go to silverware, we have to adopt a grizzly bear. Have 14 different species in the zoo, profit of 20 grand and 1,600 guests. Then for our gold star, we need to place our Siberian tiger, get an inspection report of three stars or higher, get the grizzly bear research to level three, 25 grand in profits and 2,200 guests in the zoo. First and foremost, we need to get the protesters out of here. Uh, so that means all of these animals must be taken care of. So first and foremost, let's go over to the yellow anaconda whose exhibit is basically zero for its temperature and humidity range. Uh, so let's look at old Roberto in the uh, Zoopedia and see what kind of temperature our yellow anaconda needs to be happy. 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Let's go ahead and put that at 27 or so and 80 to 90 percent humidity. Let's go 85 and split the middle. So that should take care of our yellow anaconda and already Roberto is feeling much, much better. So that was a little easy taken care of. Next up is our Titan beetles uh, over here just chilling. Uh, so looking at our enclosure, we have our exhibit temperature that is really out of whack and the humidity uh, could use some buffing up too. So let's go ahead and look at our Zoopedia for our Titan beetles. 
and get 23 to 36 Celsius. So let's go with, uh, yeah, 30 on the mark should be fine. And then let's go with uh, 40 to 60. Uh, let's go with 50. And hopefully all of these are not linked together in some way. But that should be fine. The animals, yep, all of their welfare is increasing. Temperature and humidity are all set. Luckily, that is pretty easy. That should get rid of most of the protesters. And now we have the zebra habitat way too small. And thankfully, we have some extended space over here. And it looks like all we have to do is just break down this wall. And I think the zebras and the... Um, and the giraffes can live together in harmony. So that might be a pretty easy thing to fix. Let's go ahead and look at the Zoopedia and look at the interspecies enrichment. And yes, the reticulated giraffe is one of the creatures that the zebra gets along with just fine. Well, let's just for giggles see what kind of, oh yeah, they're only at 3,000 feet of 8,300 feet. So we are gonna fix that up uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, do I want to do something cheeky? Okay, so this is another animal that we have over here. And this is the Nyala. Looking at the Nyala, can they share? All right, so they don't benefit from an interspecies enrichment. So what I can do is just knock down this back wall. Uh, that way the Nyala will still be sort of separated from the pack. Uh, but our zebras will start merging with our reticulated giraffes and have uh, all of that to run around in. So let's go ahead and knock down this wall barrier. Give me my camera, please. And ka-chunk, ka-chunk, and ka-chunk. And now let them recalculate their space. Yeah, go ahead and recalculate that, please. 3,417 habitat boundary issues. So can they not walk straight through that? It looks like they would be able to. Let me take a look at their... Yeah, their habitat stops right here. And it's saying that there is a wall here, but there's not. Does this uh, need to be recalculated in some way? I mean, the giraffe came right through. Now it's saying a dangerous animal has escaped, and that is the giraffe. All right, so how about this? Can we delete the door that supplies the giraffe? So how does the staff get in here? So the staff gets in there by that way. So let's just, for giggles, edit this barrier, tear down this door, and now see if it recalculates as a full enclosure. Yeah, it says they've, they've escaped, but they really haven't. They haven't gone anywhere. 21,000 feet. It kind of looks like we need a little bit more space in here. But people aren't freaking out because the, uh, the animals have quote unquote escaped. So let's take a look at the Nyala's uh, space requirements and see if we can like, say maybe bring this wall in a bit. So we can bring it in by a thousand feet it seems. Yeah, I think maybe if we tear down this back wall, we move maybe this wall over here to meet the center, that would be okay? Or would the Nyala like to live in this type of terrain, even though they don't get interspecies enrichment for it? You know, that's something I'd like to try. So what we'll do is we will delete this door here, edit that barrier, goodbye door, and then we're gonna knock this wall down and have the Nyala sort of share this entire enclosure with the zebras and the giraffes. 
I think that actually might work out well. Yeah, get some money back from that wall. Is that connected? Kinda? We'll see. Yeah, I'm not sure if it counts that as an, uh, as an escapable area or not. All right, Nyala, go ahead and play. It says it's escaped, but I think it just needs to uh, refresh over here. Because you haven't escaped a bit, have you? No, there it goes. It's recalculated its terrain. So now everything is awesome. Zebras should be happy. Giraffes are happy. We're almost like at the bare minimum. A habitat has become invalid. So why has that become invalid for our giraffe? I'm not sure. It's incomplete. All right, so I think this wall is an issue. So what we'll do is we'll edit the barrier and put in some brick. We'll start it there. We'll run right along the wall and then actually connect it up through the building. So that way it might read it as one contiguous uh, exhibit. Yeah, I think that actually fixed it. Yeah, we don't have any uh, alert risk. Habitat cleanliness, we'll call a keeper. We actually don't even know who we have on payroll. And then this power source is inaccessible. We've got a power plant down here at the bottom that isn't really connected to anything. It says it's inaccessible for pathing reasons. And with all of this, um, with all of this, you know, architecture, I'm not exactly sure if we can like pick it up and then place it down. Yeah, that's kind of an issue. Can we like try to finagle it right in there? It's like this entire thing was built around this power plant. And how does one go about fixing that? It's a staff path. That's going to be a little bit tricksy to fix. So let me see if I can finagle this around. Uh, maybe even possibly move it in some fashion. Because we've got a lot of decorative stuff, but we don't have a whole lot of path space. And this thing provides power for these exhibit doors this shop okay so that's tucked away nicely yeah we basically need this generator run the bathrooms the shop those two shops those two gates and the bathrooms but it's inaccessible so yeah let me see if I can uh, finagle this power plant in somewhere I can't advance move it to sort of drop it down to the path so this I might have to go knocking down some walls here uh, but we will see I'll be right back all right, there we go. So I got right down into uh, this little archway right here, and then I stopped editing on the group, and I just placed it down when it turned blue. So now the power plant is connected back up. We're waiting on our keeper to come service the ele elephants. And right now we have 500 guests with two protesters. We need no protesters. And right now, I think everything is uh, feeling okay. Okay, so we're getting elephants delivered, apparently. And vet should be called on our zebra. Let's take a look at our staff. Who do we have on our workforce? So we've got three caretakers, five keepers, three mechanics, no security guards, 19 vendors, and one vet. Let's hire two more vets, like so. We don't have any security, so we need to fix that. Let's get two security guards up in here. And let's get two more caretakers up in here to help clean everything out. 
All right, so we got disease animal, the cleanliness risk. We need a workshop. All right, so where is our staff facility? Where would it make sense to put down our shop? All right, let me take a gander around and see. I mean, with all of this faux, faux building, it's going to be tough to sort of spot the staff area. So there's the break room over here. Here's the research area and the keeper hut. So maybe if we knock down this wall here, can we edit? No, it doesn't look like we can edit this blueprint. Because it would certainly be nice if we could go in. Let's try a box select. Okay, there we go. Little rock. And yeah, because that's one solid bl blueprint, we can't select individual walls. Okay, so that might be a problem. All right, so the staff rooms. Yeah, we might be able to put it right here by this tree then. So let's move this tree a little bit out of the way. Let's go with our blueprints and see if we can get a workshop blueprint. Keeper hut, drink shop. Research center. Staff room, toilet, trade, veterinary, workshop. All right, let's flip that on around and place that right there. Of course, the terrain modification has failed. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit tricksy. It kind of reminds me of that one, uh, the one challenge when we were trying to place the bathroom and it like looked like it would go there and then it wouldn't. So can we smooth this out? No, we can't. Disabled by scenario. So we've we got to run what we brung. And that staff facility would basically upset everyone. Can we delete this boulder? And place the workshop, say, over here? Probably not. But we're going to give it the old college try. Yeah, it's going to intersect way too many things. I mean, it would be nice to place it here and then run the path, but as soon as we try to place it, the terrain gets failed. I mean, this nook... Hey, there we go. So brute force it. Gotcha. All right, let's take a look at our work zones because I imagine they are pretty jacked up too. All right, so we've got the entrance work zone the lower work zone and the island edge zone all right so island edge zone definitely get the water purification and the power plant in it but no staff room in the work zone all right how about the entrance zone then yeah because it looks like none of that is even assigned we'll assign that We'll assign these. We'll assign those two. And can we unselect? Yeah, we've unselected those. No staff zone in the work zone. Tell you what, um, would it be easier just to get rid of all the work zones completely and utterly? Let's give it a try. Delete, delete, delete. Play. Now new work zone. We'll say work zone one. And just select everything. No staff zone, staff room in the work zone. But there should be. Do we not have a staff room? We got cleanliness risk for the elephant and the aardvark. Hopefully our people are continuing to work. Yeah, one staff room. Yeah, so that whole no staff room in the work zone was a bunch of bulloni. All right, so we're fixing our cleanliness risk. We're at 765 guests. 
with eight protesters, high amounts of litter all over the place. All right, so we are gonna need to get some trash cans up in this piece. Man, I tell you what, this zoo has been given to us very, very crappily, that is for sure. All right, so let's go New World Bins. Right along the pathways. Hopefully our cleaning staff can attend to that. Where is our guest, ha our guest needs? No, it's a negative impact on guests. So we got some garbage cans there. Those are tucked out of the way. We've got some garbage there as well. Let's go ahead and place a new Arrow World bin right there. And what is this monstrosity that is uh, hurting guests? Oh, a protester. Okay, so we might, hopefully security can get on these. Uh, we might need some more security. Let's go one and two more. I mean security, you're walking right by a protester there. Remove them from the zoo, please. Okay, so once we get the disease risk gone and cleaned out, the protesters should go away. I mean, we've got a keeper in here uh, doing the feeding. So hopefully he can come in with a pooper scooper and get that all reset. All right, so aside from the garbage, we've got a lot of garbage there, and just the sheer number. Yeah, that protester is uh, making a huge swath. Can I click on that protester and say like, escort out, the spotted hyena. All right, Adelka, why are you mad? Let me select you. Okay, so you, your welfare is zero because of your social group. All right, so you need another spotted hyena in here. We can do that. And your space requirement. Oh, and I mean, look at all these plants that are absolutely wrong and not needed. Tell you what. And you need a lot more space. You need double the space. What in the world can we do to help that? I mean, we're pretty much built up in a corner. Can we move the hyena? Does the spotted hyena work well with others? No. I was going to say it would be uh, lickety split. If we could go and move the spotted hyena in with someone else. But either way, I mean, this this animal, unfortunately, is not going to be happy here in any way, shape, or form. And I don't want to put them with the warthog. I think we might release the animal to the wild for now and bring in an animal in which this space is better for? Yeah. Let's get the spotted hyena completely out of the zoo. So we still got litter. We still got a cleanliness risk. The protesters should hopefully go away pretty soon. Yeah, that water is completely and utterly busted. And is that the elephant enclosure? It is. So yeah, this water is not clean in the least bit. Where is our water? So we've got water purification there, but not here. Yeah, we have definitely have, we, we, we gotta move this thing over. It's a shame that we can't move it over like five feet, extend the range out to where it does get uh, this body of water. And it's a shame we can't connect up the two bodies of water. That way this thing would be purifying the whole kit and caboodle. 
But yeah, unfortunately... Yeah, if we could get a water purifier over here in some fashion, we could get both of these bodies of water. And I believe there's a staff area over here that we might be able to extend this staff path out and get that. Let's give it the old college try, shall we? So we got a little bit of a bridge situation. I don't think that's going to work. Let's see, if we, see, I wish we could like destroy this wall. Just get rid of this wall, knock it down. Yeah, cause this whole thing is like one big blueprint that we cannot modify. Yeah, I wish we could put water purification down. Let's see if we, if there is any way. A, so right there. It says the path is connected. Can they walk through that? Because that would be cheeky and ideal if we were able to do such things as these. But it would not get the elephant exhibit until we get out. Do we put it in? No, we can't put it in the exhibit. I wish we could like put it on the roof. Put it on the roof of the, uh, of the enclosure and then run a path down to it. Yeah, because if we put a staff path in, then the elephants can just walk through the path, I think. Unless we put in a gate. Is there a way we can edit this barrier and put in a guest gate? says it's obstructed and we wouldn't want the guests walking in there anyway huh if we delete this path and we put in a guest gate Yeah, the, we, we need, uh, where in the world even was I? Yeah, barriers. So we put in a guest gate there. And then we make this staff only? Yes. So that'll be staff only. We can put in the water purification over here. All right, let's connect up this ye old path then. Yeah, it's too aggressive of an angle, it seems. Yeah, why can't... That's tough. Uh, how about this, then? If we deleted this path, and we extended this path, like, 90 degrees to the right, Now, can we connect that up? It's having difficulty. Okay. Delete this on down. And then we'll connect this up here. Is there a way? All right. Edit the barrier, and then we're going to scoot it in. Let's grab these posts. And we're just going to scoot it ever so slightly in.
And hopefully the elephants won't have a cow. How is your space? Oh yeah, you've got plenty of space. Gotcha. We need to do the terrain modification there as well, that is for sure. All right, so then come down here. And then we'll do the natural path on. All right. I think that will work. We'll see if the AI pathing is good enough to do such things as these. But let's just get a staff path on through here. And then see if we can get water purification up in here. Something like that. All right, now we'll assign it to a work zone. All right, so that should be powered, should have water. And now when we look at the water situation, hopefully this thing is working. No, it's not powered. Tell you what we can do then, no worries, no stress. We just need a little bit of a power situation and we only have transformers. Sorry, elephant, but a uh, maintenance man is gonna have to come in here every now and again. All right, let's assign that to a work group as well. All right, so now we've got power and we've got water in the actual elephant exhibit. doesn't have to uh, really look pretty. Yeah, and looking at the water, it's being treated. So hopefully we don't have to worry about any sort of uh, sickness risk. All right, so next up, social group. Yeah, there's only one elephant in here and we need another one for the elephant to be happy. And I haven't even looked to see what kind of uh, trades we got? Do we even have access to another African elephant? Not right now, almost. We just need a bit more conservation credit. So we've got, we let's boost up the terrain a bit. The water bush isn't good. The Hil Himalayan pine is terrible. So we've got the sprinkler and the gyro available for our elephant. Let's do species African elephant and see what we know. All right, so we got the gyro, we've got the sprinkler. Do we have any food enrichment? Yes, the fixed rolled feeder. That will help make the elephant a little bit happier. So now that's 100% enriched. How about the terrain? We need more soil and less sand. All right, so I believe the sand. Yeah, I don't know where it counts the habitat. Is it right here along the wall? Yeah, if so, we're gonna have to take a look at the elephant here, at the terrain, and get more soil in here. Paint some heavy soil. Is that getting rid of the sand? A little bit. All right, so let's keep that up. Maximum size, maximum hardness. Just get rid of as much sand as we can around this edge. So that's plenty of water, plenty of shelter. Terrain is now good. Unfortunately, our elephant's uh, cleanliness is suffering. And then hopefully our uh, keeper, yeah, cleaning the African elephant. That should be our last 
alert. Once our zookeeper comes in here and gets the, the cleaning done. And I'm hoping that our service folk can use this staff path to enter and take care of that. All right, you're still at a cleanliness risk. But I don't believe that's to be the case. He cleaned up everything, or it's the water. It's probably the water. It's getting clean, getting refreshed, getting treated, uh, and it's a big body of water. So once that water is clean, uh, we will finally be able to start working on the zoo itself. And I tell you what, um, let's take a look at our animals here and see what other animals are in trouble. Um, our mandrills need to be helped, and then the rest are pretty much green. Okay, so we can take a look at our mandrills in the next episode. We're getting the cleanliness out of the way, and uh, we have five protesters. We're getting our zoo close. Um, we have more than 1,150 guests, so we need three solid months. We're at one-third of a month. So next episode, we should get our bronze award. We'll be looking through all of the animals here in the local area and try to get all of that fixed. Uh, but definitely a challenge. Definitely a challenge for sure. Um, they handed us a turd and we're gonna have to uh, give it a good polish and see what, uh, what is inside. But that will do it for me in this episode, everyone. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next episode of Planet Zoo. Take care.